All right, so we're getting kind of a late start this morning. We actually have a new tree we planted in the background. We want to show that to you guys here separately, but uh, I've got a lot of work I need to get done with my neighbor. So we have some fencing that we're going to get replaced along the area that we actually share. So the fence line that we share, we're going to eventually be pulling down the barbed wire. It's on the east side of our property. We've already gotten the holes partially dug. He did some he did some alterations, additions to our auger that allows us to basically put some downward force on the auger to help us get those holes drilled. But we're actually gonna be starting that fencing project today. I need to go over to that. Lori's gonna finish getting this tree planted then. We're gonna come back to you guys because we actually still need to get chores and stuff done. So it'll be a little upside down today. All right, so we're at the back of the property. We're about to put the first um, post in for the new fencing that's going up with our neighbors. So we're gonna see what they've got going here. Two posts in, we've got the pig acre that's behind us right here. Uh, we got this corner post that we're gonna be able to line up. Uh, as, you, as Lori scans that way, you're gonna see we've set this post at the far end of the property. So they're headed up to the very front of theirs. This acre right here is our livestock acre. So we're actually on it here. We haven't even touched it yet. So we're gonna be fencing this in. We're gonna be using uh, metal fencing and we're gonna be using field fencing actually attached to that metal. So it's a permanent fence back here that'll also run across this way so that we're gonna be able to easily block off and keep the smaller animals like sheep, goats, pigs, things like that. Here on this acre, we'll be able to use this acre for larger livestock like cattle. So one other thing I wanna show you, Nate knows how to weld, I don't. So he's gonna be teaching me how to weld as we do this project, which I'm really looking forward to. I know it's something I need to do, but we were having issues with this auger not having enough downward pressure to dig. I wish I would've gotten it on camera, we'll get it another time. But what he did was basically welded two of these hitches on the back of this auger right here. And then what we're able to do is take one of these pipes, it's nice and heavy, probably a good 20 or 30 pounds or more, put them on either side, and then we have somebody on both sides basically pushing down and it literally drops it right in and pushes right through caliche and everything else and chunks it right back out. You'll see that post down there and that's exactly what we were able to do. In fact, I was driving the tractor, Lori and Nate's wife were on one side, Nate was on the other while I was punching it down and it literally just sunk right down in. So got that post set as well. All right, Lori and I need to go, <laughs> we need to go get to chores. Today has been just kind of a mess. So we started early inside, got a project done we've got uh, the kids coming over and we're scrambling to try to get stuff done i always hate roping them into doing chores but we don't even have chores done yet <laughs> and it's uh, it's late for us like 10 30 that's late um anyways i'm gonna walk you guys over here we got the uh, pig move done we did that you guys are seeing that today if you guys are watching that one uh, so you can see the ground looks really good i've got some seeds i ordered this week well i find out from you guys uh, like i was asking in that video um what you guys think we should plant got a few things already that we're gonna definitely do a few things I'm not too sure about. That is the uh, pig manure that's mixed with wood chips. Check that one out with all the mallow surrounding it. You can just see because obviously we put water down there and then of course the nutrition coming out of there is just making that mallow grow like crazy. And then I'm gonna pan this way. I'm doing a project here with you guys in a second. But I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up or not. We've got a lot of rain that came through, about half an inch, which is a lot for us. And we've got a whole bunch of mallow that's growing all around the tree rings. And we're gonna be expanding some of these with you guys here in a second, but I'm walking back here, you guys may pick it out, but all these trees are coming out of dormancy. All the fig trees are just coming out of dormancy, which is cool to see. You can see back here, you can see that mallow around the outside of those rings. So now that's important. We talk about the swale and berms, then we're gonna be doing those here. You can see we're doing some of the uh, extensions on these trees that have been in the ground for a while to expand them. But uh, we talk about the fact that the water penetrates both inside and outside on those swales and berms. And so these trees back here, 
you can see, there we go, you can see all the mallow growing on the outside of the wood chips. So the wood chips keep the weeds down inside the ring, but that mallow is real heavy on the outside of all those rings. And the reason why is because we're irrigating in the outside rings on these fig trees back here, and the water's penetrating outside of those rings, which gives that tree even more space to grow into. So that's, again, why those rings are so important. Okay, Lori and I are gonna try to hustle. We've already come through with the tiller last week. We tilled this up. So now what we can do is actually just create the outside rings. All these fig trees back here, which is kind of what we're working in, and then up with the pear trees, all of these trees have been in the ground for a year with a couple of exceptions. So we need to expand the tree rings and start watering further away from the tree, again, to encourage that outward growth. So Lori and I are gonna try to knock this project out here, um, hopefully pretty quick. <laughs> So we got the rings done. Lori and I are completely exhausted, but you can get an idea. Nice big rings. So now what we need to do is we need to just test, make sure that the irrigation is gonna work and get into these outer rings and fill these outer rings with water before we have irrigation tonight. We wanted to try to get to wood chips in these things, but I don't think we're gonna make that today. So you can see the water's working fine. We're gonna go take a look at each one of these trees. We'll dig it out. We do wanna make sure the water's going both directions so you can see we're a little high here. But I don't know whether you're gonna be able to pick it up on camera or not. This is our mission fig tree, been in the ground for just under a year. We'll call it a year. Um, but you can see there are feeder roots everywhere down here. So this tree has been real happy, already growing out to here. And then like I was talking about earlier, you have all the mallow and everything growing on the outside of these rings. So now that we're watering out here, it's gonna to continue to push water out this way to let this tree get even bigger. So that worked out pretty good. All right, we've got a little more work to do here and then uh, on to the next project. One of the things for this time of year, of course, is watching everything come out of dormancy. So you can see that there, blackberries back in the back. We've got the Primark blackberry and the Triple Crown blackberry are coming out strong. I mean, they're doing fantastic. Those are still our go-to blackberries. The other two, um, I think it was the Loch Ness and the Columbian Giant are not doing quite as well. They're still green, not growing near as strong though, which is what we were seeing with some of the other varieties we've tried. You can see this here. These are the two contorted mulberries. They just started budding out. I mean, just barely budding out. Hopefully you'll be able to pick this up on camera right there. But uh, got nice green shoots there. The Pakistan mulberries in the back are doing as well. But one of the things that we saw this week that we were pretty excited about was around the vineyard garden. So now, We've got our fall garden beds in there still. Those we're gonna be slowly starting to convert over to cover crops for the summertime. Actually, we need to do it soon, but obviously you see as we look around, there's not a lot of green here on the vineyard garden, but all, every single one of the grapevines we've planted, which are 46 grapevines, every single one of them is budding out. So it's good to see that. So not too long from now, looking out this way and looking out from the house, we'll be seeing nothing but green all the way around there. So that was good to see. We have a lot of bare root coming that we put in the ground. So to see those break dormancy is really, really exciting. Okay, Lori and I, it's getting, it's getting really warm. The pigs are actually trying to find shade today. That tells you that it's definitely warm out here. And the chickens, you can see them over there on pasture. There we go. So the chickens are out right now, but they kind of go in and out here throughout the day, at least while we're out and we can keep an eye on them. Okay, Lori and I are gonna snag a few things here and then we wanna, we wanna show you what happened with our fig pops. Uh, yeah, maybe not so good. We're gonna give you guys an update on our fig pops, our fig starts, and Natasha, I'm sorry, we did not do a very good job. <laughs> so far, it looks like this may be a failure. So, to recap, a couple months ago, we started the fig starts and I think we had a pretty good foundation. We put them in a closet, uh, so it was nice and dark. We did not have any heat on them in the beginning. It was way too cold. So we did find this guy on Amazon. It actually worked pretty good. It's the Vivo Sun heat mat and digital thermostat combo. Um, I was surprised it did as good as it did because it wasn't very expensive. Um, I'll drop this in the Amazon shop because it actually is definitely worth considering. And I think we'll start use it for other starts. 
um, because it did keep a very consistent temperature. Um, However, I think the mistake that we made, and you'll see in a second, is we wet down the wood chips and the straw. And there was, I think, way too much moisture inside the enclosed container because after about a month, we got a lot of growth at the top. Almost all of them have had actually broken and had done some branching. And then we started seeing mold and that was a big mistake, that was a big problem. And so we opened the lid, dried out, and then almost everything dried out. So um, I don't know whether or not these are gonna make it when it's all said and done, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at them. So we're gonna get these potted up into these little one gallon pots. We figured this is a good way to start. Um, I know a couple of these are gonna be in good shape. You can kind of see some branching and leafing out that's happening here. Um, so I think they'll start out just fine in these one gallon pots and then we'll be able to up pot them as we need to, uh, assuming that we actually see some growth. So we'll see. So we don't know which ones actually took until right now. So we're learning with you guys which ones we think actually took. So I can see some rooting definitely up here at the top, which is good to see. Uh, a little bit of rooting going down about halfway down into this root ball. So this one we're gonna go ahead and pot up first. And it is a black Madeira, which is really exciting. Uh, actually, I'm super, super excited about that. The branching looks really good. The rooting looks like it's going pretty well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get it into this one gallon pot. And we're gonna be using this Patio Plus. You guys can get this from Home Depot. That's where we got it. Um, to go ahead and add soil and get these in pots first. What do you think about there? Oh, so we got our tag, right? I got this one. I'll just tie it on to it. Yeah, I probably instead of cutting the sides, I'd cut the bottom and kind of slide it out. All right. Which, oh, here. You, know. you grab. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get soil around it pretty fast. Okay. Got it? Mm-hmm. Get some, some soil down there. <laughs> 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 I want a bigger pot. All right. All right, so first one in, fumbled a little bit on the handoff there, but the black Madeira, at least the first black Madeira, uh, that one is potted up into this one gallon pot. So we'll keep an eye on this. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where we're gonna put it. Probably keep it in the outbuilding because it's kind of like a greenhouse, stable temperature when it's nice, not too hot on it. So we're gonna walk out real quick, get this watered in, and just set it right outside. We got the Marseille Black, Marseille, I think it's Marseille. Marseille Black, very good rooting. In fact, why don't you bring it over to the camera? That way they can see it. Rooting looks really good all the way down to the bottom, which is great to see. So hopefully we can get this uh, transplanted a little bit better than the last one and not fumble the handoff. We just took some gardener's tape and we have like one of those little P-touch labels on the end with some initials and we've got a little list that we know what it is. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside, get it watered and we'll move on to the next one. Another Marseille Black. Okay, so we got two of those. So we got a couple more here. We got the Martinica Ramada. That's this one here. So we see a little bit of rooting at the top. Uh, the, another black Madeira, which looks really good. And how about this Pastillieri? 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 Mm -hmm. A little yeah, bit there's of rooting? rooting. Got some rooting on a Pastillieri as well, yeah, um, which is good to see. And then we had one that we grabbed that we'll show you. Doesn't have any growth on it as far as the top is concerned. Almost like a little nub right here. It seems kind of dry, but it looks like we might have a little bit of rooting at the top, which is good to see, because we're a little concerned with the rest of these, but let's go ahead and get these potted up. ahead and we got all these pots ready to go. So these are all of the varieties that we did not necessarily get uh, or did not get to take. So this first one, this is the uh, Hotva de Argentile or however you pronounce that. 
We do see some rooting in here, which is a good sign. Um, and there were some branches that were growing and they're still just a little bit soft. Um, so we're hopeful that these, the roots are gonna be okay. We're gonna get those planted first. And then the rest of these uh, didn't take. So what do we have? We've got the Genovese Nero, the LSU Scots Black, the Chicago Hardy, and the Socorro Black. Is that what that is? Right? Um, so those are the ones that it doesn't look like they took. Now, we're not going to take a chance. We're going to just assume that maybe there's something down here in the roots, that maybe there were some roots that took. So we're going to go ahead and get them potted up and assume or hope that maybe there's some roots down there we can't see. We do know that these can grow directly from the roots. They don't have to grow from the cuttings that we see. So we're gonna go ahead and get them potted up and see, keep the fingers crossed, hopefully they'll actually still take. We've got these down here. We'll see how they do. We've got, we actually decided to put one in a five gallon pot just to see how it's gonna do. It was, I can't remember which one. I think it was the Black Madeira. Just wanna see how it does in a five gallon pot versus these one gallon pots. I can tell you, it was an interesting little test. We don't didn't know what we were doing, clearly. Most of these didn't take. We've done fig propagation a couple different ways. Um, this one, we didn't probably do right. I'm pretty confident we didn't. Um, but we've done them a few other ways. We've basically just taken cuttings and put them directly into soil in the winter time and had them take with about a 30 or 40 percent success rate better rate than this and we've done air layering and actually we've had a hundred percent success with air layering so i think that's going to actually be my preferred method at least for the fig trees that we have here so if you guys watched the video on us doing harvest harvesting the daikon radish you guys will remember that we talked about putting this pot up here in the bed so we can get worm activity down into the beds and then moving this pot i've got austin here with me today so he's going to help me move this thing because it's really heavy but I wanna take a look underneath because last night we saw some pretty good worm activity. So let's take a peek and see what's under there. Might be hard to pick out, but here's a worm right there. So you can see that guy there. I saw a nice big one last night and I can guarantee you there's plenty of worms that are down in here. And so I know that I've got some worms transplanted into here, should have some worms left in this pot. So now what Austin and I are gonna to try to do is get this pot over into that bed without breaking the pot. I think it was a couple weeks ago in one of the vlogs, I had actually trimmed this back and basically coppiced it because we're kind of testing that with this little guy who keeps surviving our winters. I've got some new growth right in here. Um, so it's just starting to peak out as we get up into the 80s. Finally, got some new growth there. Got a little nub that's coming out there. So this one's definitely gonna be coming back in several different spots here. So at some point in time, I suppose we should probably get this thing into the ground. <laughs> You guys know that we had uh, some concerns about the chicks. They were doing really well, so it's nice and warm. They do like the warmth. Lost a couple during the week, so we're finally through that tough week. Um, so I think we're gonna be okay uh, with those guys. We'll see once we get them on a pasture, kind of how they do. I think that's gonna be about it for today. So really excited because spring is definitely around the corner. Got a lot of green coming up. Really excited about that too. Wanted to give you guys a few updates, wrap up a few projects. We got a lot we still need to do. But you know, there's actually one update that I have not given to you guys. A couple months back, we transplanted a lime tree for our neighbor and we have not given you guys an update on that. Man, this little thing, I had to put all my shoulder strength into. All your shoulder strength? <laughs> Is that where you get your superpowers? <laughs> it does. We can eat lunch. What time is it? It's like 10 after 11. It feels like five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> is that your stomach? Yeah, it's my stomach? Oh my goodness, I wonder if you're gonna be able to hear that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What are you talking about? You said, I promised Austin last week I'd spend time with him because- I literally promised Austin last week. Me. Did I promise you that I would spend time with you last week? <laughs> I'm totally confused. This is what happens when all you have is just a boy and all of a sudden now there's a girl involved. I can't handle the emotions. I just can't. You said, you said, 
I didn't get to spend time with Austin last week. Well, you didn't think I had me either. So Nikki's feeling really upset because I said that, oh, she's out. <laughs> she's done. <laughs> I, so, I don't know what to do. 